The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. We'll start the seminar at this time. If everyone could take their seats here. Thank you. Um, so welcome to today's uh, special brown bag seminar. My name is Nancy Holm. I'm assistant director here at ISDC. We have a number of uh, seminars coming up in the next few weeks. So we have flyers outside the door here uh, by our conference room. And for those uh, viewing or listening online, we also have those up on our website. All of the seminars that we have here at ISTC are recorded and then archived on our website. So if you check back in about uh, four or five days, we usually have those posted. I would like uh, to ask those here in the audience to please uh, take time now to silence your cell phones. And then also I want to let you know that we'll hold all the questions till the end and then we'll We'll have uh, questions for our speakers. And for those viewing online, you can type in those questions at any time, and then we'll ask those for you uh, at the end of the seminar. So I want to uh, welcome our guests today um, who are with us from Brazil. And uh, we have Everson Telgatti and Stefan uh, Hart with us. Um, they are both with MRG Solutions from Brazil. They are looking to get into the waste management market in, in Brazil and will talk to us about um, the approach in Brazil to, to waste, uh, municipal solid waste, petroleum coke, coal, and e-waste. So I'll turn it over to them. All right, thank you very much, Nancy, for the kind introduction of ourselves. It's, it's a pleasure to, to be here, and thanks a lot for the opportunity to present about the, the waste panorama in Brazil. I'm very excited to be here because it is a great opportunity that we are very much looking forward to share this with companies and especially with ISTC, uh, uh, this, this panorama. And uh, Everson Dargati is our CEO. He's here with us. He's a CEO of Energy Solutions. He's a president of the Institute of Applied Technology and Qualifications, that stands for ITAQ. And he also is the president of the Brazilian Association of Thermal Waste Treatment, that is called ABTT. And uh, he's, a, he's a former lawyer with specialization in tax law. And my name is Stefan Hart. I'm the new business development and commercial director here from Energy Solutions, and also in charge of international relations from um, the Institute of Applied Technology and Qualification. I uh, read it here in, in, uh, in uh, U.S. engineering management, and, how, and I also hold a, an industrial engineer degree from Brazil. So today we're going to just going to talk a bit about uh, who we are, Emerging Solutions, to, to give you a sense about what we do and why we are wanting to work in the, the waste area. And, and we're going to give you a, a general panorama about the waste situation in Brazil, touching bases on municipal solid waste, pet coke, mineral coal, and e-waste. And especially, we're gonna, the other three topics that we're going to talk about is best practice of doing business in Brazil. That is something very interesting that we would like to share because this is a, a challenge, especially for companies who are coming from fourth world countries. And uh, we're going to give also a special uh, overview about the state of Paraná, in which we have the support from the Secretary of Development from Paraná and the Industry Commerce Organization from the state of Paraná, who has been supporting us through this project, and we also have support from the ministers in this regard. So, um, so, so as we start here, uh, MRG Solutions, we are a company headquartered in Curitiba, in the state of Paraná, Brazil. We have approximately around globally 497 employees. And uh, we work in several areas. We have several divisions in which we, we work as, such as the oil and gas, the industrial engineering aspect, the renewable energy division, yeah, and we also have our own production facility, and then we also have a joint venture with an Italian company called Steph. Uh, on the, our engineering division side, some of our competencies are 2D development, 3D development, technical norms of the question. That is something very important to keep in mind, because in Brazil, we are very strong in those aspects. Uh, industrial design, manufacturing processes, and finite element analysis. These are some of the, 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 the services of some of the value added that our engineering division are able to offer in that regard. Uh, this is to give you an idea of uh, how we are situated globally. So we have two offices in, in, uh, in Brazil and also four offices in, in Europe, where we have two in Italy, one in India, and one in Turkey. 
And from not only we have our, the, our engineering capability, but we also have our own manufacturing facility that is, uh, that is located in, in São José dos Pinhais, which we are able to offer the following processes, such as laser cutting, CNC cutter, hydraulic stamping, assembly, CNC lock, machining center with five axes, painting powder such as powder and top coat, welding, and CNC miling. This is just a picture of manufacturing facility. And this gives an idea that we are not only able to produce, I mean, develop engineering projects, but also we are able to make those projects to come to reality by manufacturing them using our manufacturing facility. These are some of the end products that we are able to produce. So we have uh, industrial manipulators, for example, that we did from some automotive uh, clients, and also welding dispositives. So this is just an idea that in how qualified we're able to develop those uh, production facilities. And aligned to those uh, divisions, we also have our own Institute of Applied uh, Technology that is a non-for-profit uh, organization. It's privately held and is uh, audited by Deloitte. And some of the areas of expertise are agricultural, automotive manufacturing, oil and gas, sanitation, environment, renewable energy, prevention of disasters, and urban mobility. These are some of the, the, the companies that we have developed projects. So we have here Petrobras, uh, Case New Holland, Fiat Group is one of our strongest customers here. And, um, and, the, and the, probably you're asking, so, so what is our interest? What are our motivations in, in working in the waste business? So now I'm making a transition to the waste panorama. The main reason that we have been working this for about more than one year and a half is due to the fact of the national solid waste policy that came in effect this August of this year. It started in 2010, and now it came in effect uh, two months ago. And what are the, the main pillars of this uh, national policy waste? This is a shared responsibility between the public sector and the private sector, meaning that all these, these sectors now they have more responsibility in order to do a, a proper waste treatment and a proper disposal of the waste. The second pillar is reverse logistics. This is more applied to the private company where the private companies now they have a responsibility to make sure that whatever they produce, it returns back to them in a proper way. We have also the environmental monitoring and supervision of means disposal. So we have a more diligent and thorough monitoring to make sure that all the waste that is being generated is being measured accordingly and is being uh, 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 designated to, uh, adequately according to the laws that have been implemented. Another pillar is selective waste collection. This is either for us as population habitants and as well whoever is collecting from the government. So by, 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 by being a responsibility from the citizens, they need to make sure that they are disposing the waste such as in the proper areas such as metal, glass, organic, and etc. And also on the other side, the public sector needs to make sure that they are segregating them accordingly to their type. And the, mo the most important uh, pillar as well is that there are initiatives available for R&D and means of waste disposal. So there are fundings and initiatives that the government is providing in order to develop solutions for the waste. And what are the main objectives of this um, uh, new policy? It's first to, to, to make environmental correct and final disposal of waste, create recovery programs for sanitary landfills and dumps, where eventually in the future we would like to eliminate as well the controlled and, uh, landfills. Right now, you cannot have any more dumps, open dumps over there. You, you can designate them to a controlled landfill or engineered landfill, but eventually that's just for a, a short term basis because eventually we would like to get rid of the problem of getting uh, so this is part of the, the, the pillar objectives. And also of course you have programs for reduction of generation of MSW, of dry waste and wet waste. So these are the main uh, objectives of this new policy. So what are the ways that are affected by the uh, national policy of, of waste in Brazil? Some of them are the health the hospital waste mineral coal, electronic waste, construction waste, petroleum coke, and MSW. These are some, there are many other, many others, but these are some in which we're going to give you an, an overview specifically for MSW and e-waste in which we have been working 
very deeply. And now we're going to talk, give you an, 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 an overview about the petroleum coal situation and the coal in Brazil, in which we have as well. And there are opportunities that we can, that we will be able to develop together in exploring uh, market. And who is affected by this new policy? So it would be urban scavengers, public sectors, the private sectors, and the general public. For the public sectors, they have the responsibility to have a more diligent and responsible manner in disposing the waste. As I mentioned, this is a mural. It's not only for the citizen, but also the, the public sector and the private sector, they have responsibility of disposing it uh, with a diligent and responsible manner. Another sector is the private sector, in which they need to apply the reverse logistics. So if they produce a good, they need to make sure that all the waste is generated at the end of the supply chain needs to be returned back to the source accordingly with the uh, waste um, uh, policies from this new law. Urban scavengers. This is something very common in Brazil that we have, uh, uh, that we have unique comparing to the U.S. We see a lot of urban scavengers on the streets collecting waste over there. And, and the idea with this new policy is that to make it a more professional, more qualified uh, uh, labor for this. So, so the, the, the policy uh, initiatives motivates for you uh, to make it, uh, those, those labels more professional and, and qualified. And the general public, of course, this is uh, to educate the public in order to dispose the waste in an appropriate manner. So now let's give you a, a, a bit of a panorama about Brazil and the MSW. So Brazil is a very extent country. So we're talking about the third extension, about almost 8 million kilometers, uh, square, square uh, kilometers. Population around 203 million of inhabitants, a GDP close to 2.3, and we have more than 5,500 municipalities and counties. So for sanitary land fuels, we have about 2,226. Controlled land fuels, we have about 1,775. And dumps, we have available about 1,569. Okay. And this is a very interesting market. Why? Because for 2013, it was invested is a market potential about $12 billion of dollars, where Part of this money was invested in the public, and three billion was invested in the public, and nine billion was invested in the private sector. And this was responsible for the generation of 330, almost 334 uh, million uh, thousand of direct jobs. And part of this money was invested in collection, uh, that was four billion, and other eight billion to others that would be disposal, sweeping, weeding, cleaning, and maintenance of green areas and cleaning streams. So this is to give you an idea about the comparison of what is generated as waste and what is actually collected. So in blue, you have here the, the amount of population. Here is the amount of, uh, of generation of MSW. And this is how much is actually collected. And the important statistics is that per capita, we have about uh, one kilo, almost one kilo and 10, that's approximately 2.2 uh, 2 pounds of uh, waste generated per capita. This is to give you an assessment of where, of an index of generation of collecting of MSI by region. So, so in the South Swiss region here, we have about most of the generation of MSW, that is 52%, where 90% are actually collected. After that, it comes to Northeast, where we produce about 53,000 uh, tons per day, where only 78% are actually collected. And then comes the south, it's 21, uh, almost 22,000 tons per day, where 94% are actually collected. The Midwest and then afterwards the north. So we can see that in the south and southeast region, we have more, a more high rate of collection because these are regions more developed in Brazil versus, for example, the northern part that we only have 80 and 78%. So this gives you a sensitivity that is a great opportunity. It's, it's, it's also a deficit, but in all deficit, we have an opportunity in order to explore business in the waste area. 
So this is give you an idea of the distribution. Uh, and you put it in a graph where uh, uh, you have the south region, the northeast, the southern, the northern, and the midwest region. So this is just another way in how to express uh, graphically the other slide that I just showed before. So what is the destination of this MSW? Comparing to uh, adequate, appropriate and inappropriate. So we have only 58% that are being designated now, according to the data of 2014, to sanitary landfills. And all the rest, the 41.7, is being designated to dumps and controlled landfills. And remember that the policy says that for now, you cannot have any more dumps. And eventually, the controlled landfill will eventually disappear as well. So you have this, this only for now, for 2013, you have 41.70% of a market opportunity you want to explore. And what is the composition of the waste in Brazil? So this is a very particular thing compared to other countries, for example, of Europe and Asia. Uh, one of the particularities of the waste is that 52% of the total municipal solid waste is organic material. And more than that, the moisture content is approximately to 50%. And together with that, we have here other materials such as rubber, leather, rags, glass, ferrous material, cardboard, and paper. But I think the more, most important here is the, the, the organic material that we, that we face in Brazil. So here are some news that I would like to show to indicate the seriousness of when you're talking about waste in Brazil, this is something very serious. Because in 2013, there were more than 23.8 thousands fined in Rio for having uh, an irregular and inappropriate disposal of waste for citizens. So whenever you're talking about, the point here is that whenever you're talking about waste and environmental aspects in Brazil, this is something very critical that needs to be addressed very seriously. For example, another case that probably you mind is that in March of this year, uh, there was a, a, a riot from the, the, the scavengers that they, they said, I don't want to collect any more waste. And what happened is, is this is in Ipanema. All the waste, this was in the, especially during the moment of Carnival. So this, there was a lot of tourism over there, and that was very uh, disappointing as, as, as being from there to see this type of uh, situation. And, and you can see that, that if you not address this correctly, you can face serious consequences. So this is the potential of, uh, if you would make an analysis of, of 2000 and, and beyond, of how much municipal solid waste would be available for the electric power. So here, uh, you would have around 42.5 million, I mean, starting in, in 2037 uh, million of, of, of tons available for, uh, for, the, for, for the electric power. And you can see that here is a decrease from 2005 to 2010, because of why we question, why do you have a decrease? Because in 2005, there was lots of, of investments in this area for the collection of waste. So this means that you have less available municipal solid waste because they started creating developments. That's why you have a, a decrease here in available municipal solid waste for that system. But the tendency is that for the future, it's still continue to grow and even surpass what we had at a critical in 2005. So making a comparison now is important also to see, to make an analysis about how much electricity we would be able to, to produce if we have installed an appropriate technology. As you may know, the, the, the electric grid in Brazil is very fragile because it's truly really dependable on the hydraulic. And, um, and this is the, for example, uh, just to give you a quick fact, we are fortunately in a way that we didn't, our GDP didn't grow as we expected of 5% because otherwise we would run out of energy. It was expected to be grow 5%, but we only did less than 1%. If we had achieved 5%, we would have an energy crisis. So that's why it's important to see with this slide the, the opportunity that you have that we could have a solve even this problem if we have worked before. And moving on, what is the available uh, energy uh, potential for us to develop. So we, we collected four, four uh, technologies such as gasification, plasmification, incineration, and pyrolysis. 
And here you can see that if we started in 2000, we would be able to produce 22 tera of, of, of uh, terawatts for this. So this is, uh, of course, pyrolysis and gasification to go together regarding efficiency. If you, for, for example, if you have one ton available, you would be able to, to uh, produce uh, one megawatt per hour. And that's why this is together over here. But this is giving a sensitivity of the potential market of uh, electricity by using municipal solid waste. And, and recently, due to the fact of the necessity, the necessity to find other sources of energy, October 31st, there's going to be an auction where they're going to determine, for example, the electricity uh, for, for using biomass and, and waste treatment, like waste to energy technologies. And, and so we expect that, for example, using electricity, we have expect that we can be able to sell this to the market with a minimum of 13 cents per kilowatt. So it's, it's very feasible in order to develop a business, for example, using those thermal technologies um, that we have demonstrated. So finalizing municipal solid waste, we would like to also give you a panorama overview about the mineral coal market in Brazil. So when we talk about Brazil, regarding resource, Brazil globally is located in number 14 in number of resources. But our production is very low compared to the other questions. That's why our position is 26. And this is a, it's a very seasonal product because you can see in, in making analysis between 11, uh, 2011, 2012, 13, and 14, you have a, a variation of, of production of coal uh, here. It's a pretty much a stable uh, tendency is a control it because you have 4, 420 and up here at 63. It doesn't surpass this, and there's a tendency of growth. But the only problem that we're going to see on another slide with our coal from Brazil that you only can use it for, for thermoelectrics. You cannot use it, for example, as you use over here for metallurgic and steel making because of the we produce only hard coal, and this is uh, that's a, that's why we are not so well uh, uh, positioned regarding production. Because there's no, uh, we only use it for thermoelectric. And regarding uh, the number of reserves, right now we have identified it to we have known reserves and inferred uh, reserve. So for, for, for the reserves over here, we have about 7,000 uh, million of tons available that we are going to be working versus what is expected, that is 25,000 million of tons. This means that the, my, the, here we have a, effectively how much we have identified as reserves. And the 25,000 million of tons is what we expect that we might have here in Brazil. So there's a great opportunity that we would be able to also to explore the waste of the coal. And regarding coal, just to give you a ranking about where are the most of the reserves, uh, you would have Rio Grande do Sul as a leading uh, state with 89% of almost 90% of the reserve of coal followed by Santa Catarina, that is 10%, Paraná, that has about 0.32%, and Sao Paulo. So in other words, the coal reserves and the production are more located in the south part of Brazil. And again, here, uh, uh, the high, we, we produce the hard coal type, high carbon content, holds about 32 billion of tons of reserves. And as I mentioned, in, 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 located in those locations. And here, you can have uh, an idea of the share. For example, Rio Grande do Sul have the highest percentage of share regarding production versus Santa Catarina. But the other, on the other hand, regarding revenue, Rio Grande do Sul has lesser participation versus Santa Catarina. And, and again, talking about the quality of the coal, what happens is that the coal that we produce it just has a high carbon content and you cannot produce it, for example, to, for the metallurgic industry. That's why it happens that we end up importing coal about 40% from other countries. And these are the other uh, type of minerals that we are able to, to, to that we also uh, import globally. And this is an interesting um, a graph that gives you an overview about the energetic matrix. So here are some of the energy matrix that we, we have collected, such as nuclear, petroleum, natural gas, wind power, uh, biomass, hydraulic, and coal. And over here, uh, comparing from 2002 
2013, you can see that mainly it is hydraulic. We present about 70% of, uh, of our energy grid is all hydraulic. And if you compare from 2012 to 2013, we had a decrease here because of the crisis. We had a severe uh, dryness in, the, in, in Brazil. And therefore, what happens is that in 2012, we have only 1.6, so we had to increase our, our, our usage of coal in that regard to 2.6. And regarding waste, if you talk about biomass, we see that it is not, not so well explored. And as you can see, there's a huge market that we can use. And it's unfortunate that we still have not been using that in order to, to, to find a solution for the, our, our energy grid uh, situation that is currently fragile in Brazil. Here is the, uh, the usage of energy. So we use about 13%, given all these this, this other uh, 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 sources. The consumption is about 13% of mineral coal in Brazil uh, by the industry. So let's talk about uh, pet coal, petroleum coal market in Brazil. As you may know, Brazil has a extensive reserve of uh, petroleum. And uh, in, in, when we talk about petroleum, making analysis of the burial, uh, in Brazil, 7.5% of the barrel that is located in the, in the, in the, in the lower level of the, the barrel is pet coal. So, and Petrobras represents about 85% of the, uh, uh, the pet coal produced in Brazil. And what are the applications that you could use pet coal in Brazil are these. You can use it for the steel industry, as for, for the pig iron alloys, coal mining, cement companies, thermoelectrics, casting, calcination, drying, gasification especially because they have a high content, a calorific uh, content that you can use it when you're uh, using pet coke as a waste in order to, to gasify it and also on the chemical industry you can use. So here you can have an idea of how much million of barrels of pet coke you would produce. Basically what we did is that that uh, we, we, we got the, the total production of barrels uh, per year and we multiplied it by 7.5 that represents the, the barrel of pet coke and we were able to achieve 0 0.315 uh, millions of barrels available of pet coke to use in Brazil. Another opportunity regarding the waste is the electronic waste in Brazil. Part of the, the law, the new law that came in effect, the, the national policy of waste, it, it also mentions about sectoral agreement for the following areas, such as batteries, for instance, uh, lamps, other electronic products, tires, pesticides, and lubricant oils and packaging waste. And for e-waste, there's a special sectoral agreement that mainly companies need to be in it in order to have access to this e-waste. So this is a, a general overview about uh, the waste of that electronic productions in Brazil. So in Brazil, we classified it uh, accordingly to colors, such as blue line, white line, brown line, and green line. And I'm going to go before it, but just to explain you what this green line represents are desktops, notebooks, printers, cell phones. Brown line would be CRT televisions, plasma televisions, DVDs, and other devices. White lines would be refrigerators, freezers, stoves and air conditions, and blue line would be mixers, planners, iron, and drills. And each one have a different average durability life cycle of this. So here in Brazil, you can see that Southeast responsible for almost 56%, followed again by Northeast, and then by the South with 16%, Midwest 9.2, and North of 5.1. And you can see that mainly is the blue line that is, that is uh, produced. That would be the mixed and blended zones and drills. So regarding e-waste production, so we were talking about electronic production, about, now let's talk about e-waste. And this is the amount of, of tons of e-waste that uh, we expect to generate for the coming years in, in thousands of tons. So right here, you have about 1.1 uh, million of, of, of available uh, waste. And you have a peak in 2016 and 2017 due to the fact that this ends the life cycle of five years on most of the electronics. So that's why we have a peak. So this means that here uh, in Brazil, or uh, there in Brazil, we have a great opportunity also in order to explore the e-waste market in this, in this regard. This is just giving an overview of where is located the most part of the waste. 
that is in the southern region of Brazil. Here we're having about uh, uh, 686,000 of, uh, of net waste available to explore. Having again that, that peaks on the, on, on, the, on the green line. And again, green line would be desktop, notebooks, printers, and cell phones. And this is something very interesting. That is, what is the current model and where is the opportunity? How can I generate opportunities with the e-waste? Currently, our model in Brazil is that. Uh, mainly, the OEMs produce the, 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 the products. They send it to the, the, they sell it to the customers. The customers dispose back to the, to, to the, to the, the waste area, uh, to the, the, the collection points, the storage. And they only disassemble it with the net circuits, and we export it to other countries. And this is bad. Why? Because in the net circuits, you uh, have the most, uh, most part of the, 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 the circuit boards are composed by precious metals and rare earth metals. And these are highly added value products. And the problem over here is that we are exporting this to other countries to extract and sell those minerals in the aftermarket. That's, that's where is the money right now. So in Brazil, we only represented a maximum of 30% of efficiency regarding the, regarding the waste. And in the sector agreement, that are showed in the, in, the, in, the, in the first slides is that you need to have at least a technology that have 98% of efficiency. Therefore, you will need to, to, to also be able to extract the precious metals uh, and the rare earth metals from these circuit boards. These are currently the recycling centers in Brazil according to the Abrel. Uh, that is a, a Brazilian uh, uh, data collector for waste. So we, we see here in, in, in the state of Sao Paulo, we have most of them and Paraná, uh, where we have the most location of uh, waste recyclers. But again, they only do part of the recycling process. That is 30%. That is just only the disassembly. They, they pack it in those uh, uh, shredded uh, circuit boards. They put it in a container and send it out to Asia, or to, to Europe, or to Canada. For example, to, to extract to the smelters and to extract the precious metals over there. And now we go to another topic that is best practice for doing business in Brazil. I um, I, I I'm not sure if I mentioned, but I was born here in in, in U.S. and I lived for a while. I graduated here. My first degree I got here and I started working, and I got used to the way of doing business in Brazil. And when I was transferred to to Brazil. I had a lot of resistance in order to understand how the model of doing business in Brazil is done. And uh, we were able, by, with, by working at MRG, I was able to detect what would be the best practices in order to be successful. Because there are many companies in the past that they go to, 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 to Brazil imagining that the way of doing business is like in America or in Europe and Asia. But what happens is that when they arrive, they're not aware about the conditions, about the particularities that you need to make sure to cover in order to be successful. And unfortunately, what happens is that they end up uh, failing and needing to, 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 to abort the project. And in worst case scenarios, they need to, to uh, even close the business if they have installed. And this is a huge uh, casualty. But MRG solutions, I mean, uh, in understanding the, these, these challenges, we were able to provide best practice if there's companies who are interested in coming to Brazil of doing business over there that one of them is to attend the minimum regional content. That, that means that in Brazil, uh, the govern in order to have access to credit lines and also initiatives, you would need to, be to have at least a minimum regional content uh, requirement. That is typically around 6 to 65%. This means what? That the best model for us to work is via transfer of technology so we can adapt it using our engineers accordingly to, the, to the, uh, the suppliers and also be able to produce part of it. So you would be able to have access to these credit lines. And if in case you would have, for example, a, a technology that is uh, patented, we would, uh, for in some cases, we import whatever, whatever is the core parts. And uh, we would register accordingly to the uh, guarantee protection of the intellectual property by registering, registering this, this patent to the adequate entity for patent registration and property intellect, that is the INPI. So these are the funds. Attend the minimum regional contact by having a qualified suppliers 
and and by by saying by by by, by meaning nationalization, we mean this this is more uh, adapted to technology, so we can develop the labor in Brazil and also use the suppliers. So this way, we would have access to credit lines and funds available. Uh, and then moving on, we would have also be able to capture and develop the private and public resource for municipalities, as I as I explained it to you, by being a national, being able to uh, to to comply with this national company requirement. We would have access to credit uh, uh, financing from public and, and, and private financial institutions. And mainly, you would have to have knowledge of the market, know the ins and outs of this market in Brazil in order to be successful. Another point here is that you need to be approved in sectoral agreements, especially if, you're, if you want to develop a business in the, in the waste area, you would have to be uh, certify and in to the sector agreement that in case for example for the electronic waste it would give you about 10 years of the market where all the feedstock would be guaranteed so feedstock would not be a problem so you'd be able to guarantee your feedstock in order to run your plant they have that cover those two points over here and also especially attending the governing law uh, that is being placed understand very well having a team very well, well qualified in order to be able to be appointed to this law so in order to reduce the high cost for implementing technology in Brazil, by, by, by doing those best practices by, so, such as having a national and local company and a domestic, being able to, to domestically produce your product, have a model of technology transfer, have an integrated network of suppliers in order to guarantee the, uh, the, uh, the quality of your product, and, uh, and being able to raise funds and access to the government in, uh, initiatives, and especially having as well online to get a knowledge of the productive system, you would be able to be very competitive uh, in the market if you would like to pro, uh, enter into the waste business. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, I just wanted to, we're almost uh, over with the time, right? Uh, I think we have about five minutes still. But uh, I, we are here also uh, representing and having the support from the state of Paraná. And uh, we would like to give you also an overview about what is Paraná for those who doesn't know still the Paraná and opportunities. There are many opportunities that we'll be able to develop here. And we have the, the support also from the Secretary of Development and the Industry Commerce as well. And that's why we believe it's important to share these opportunities also in the state of Paraná. So the state of Paraná is the third largest industrial hub in Brazil. We are the fifth largest economy in the country. And uh, we are the third Brazilian state in terms of competitiveness in Brazil. We have uh, our GDP in Brazil is around 5.4% of the large GDP in Brazil. We have an average annual growth of 4.9%, in which we are above our national average is 3.7%. So this means that we are a very economically well positioned economy uh, beyond all the other states in Brazil. And what is the composition of the GDP? So mainly it is the industry, and then the commerce and agriculture. Those are the main uh, composition distribution of the of the market in, in, in the state of Paraná. And what are the main industries? We are the second largest automotive hub of Brazil. We have uh, 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 automotive business such as Renault, that is a French automotive business provider, Volkswagen. We have a uh, case in New Holland over there. Uh, so we are very well. Uh, position it regarding uh, the automotive hub for Brazil. We have also have presence of uh, uh, the biggest uh, food and beverage uh, providers, oil and gas, Petrobras is over there, and also uh, regarding oil and gas, we have one of the biggest reserves of, sh of shale gas in the state of Paraná compared to others in Brazil. We have chemical uh, companies and also pulp and paper. Some of the general data infrastructure. We have 40 airports where two are international. We have two, par two, two ports in Paranaguá that is one of the largest ports in the south of the country. Uh, we, regarding uh, the, 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 the construction of roads, we have about 13,750 kilometers of uh, an extent. And regarding railways, it's about 2,400 kilometers of extent. And we also have one waterway. Comparing to Brazil, this is a very well uh, positioned uh, in, this, in, in Brazil in overall. And one of the main advantages is Brazil that we have, as I mentioned on, on the first slide, we have a program that's called Competitive Paraná that gives you 
uh, very competitive in taxes in order to bring business over there. So Paraná State is a very good state if you like to develop business. And uh, we, we suggest that if you're, if, if you're looking to, to uh, develop a business in Brazil, with Paraná, with all the institutes and techs that are able to provide, you will be able to be very cost efficient in that, in that regard. We also have a lot of actions going on, such as the modernization of the fiscal policy, the expansion of the foreign trade, optimization of the existing infrastructure, qualification of money power, and the digitalization. As you know, Brazil is very bureaucratic, and Paraná is one of the few uh, states that are not well developed, uh, well, not well bureaucratic, uh, in a way that you you be very successful and easy uh, to develop a business. So, and just some of the results. Every day, companies announce new investments that move all regions in Paraná. It's a cycle of industrial in the state. So, basically, basically this is uh, mainly the overall that um, we did about uh, the panorama in Paraná. And also, just to give you a, a teaser, uh, for next year, we're going to be uh, organizing, Emerging Solutions is going to be organizing uh, the first international congress of thermal treatment of municipal solid waste in Brazil. So I believe that our time is up, and uh, uh, I will leave uh, so for for question and answer for now. If anyone has, sure. No, no time. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we'll take any questions here first from the audience. Do people have one? Kevin? Hi, Stefan. Very good. Very nice uh, presentation. I had some questions. You showed some data on coal. And I was wondering, um, in particular, uh, could you speak to whether what is the trend? Obviously, as you indicated, there are some issues in using coal for other applications. but. Uh, number one, uh, could you speak to the existing coal-fired uh, power plants there? Are they uh, PC-based, or are they using some other technique for that, number one? And number two, is there a plan and is there a trend for new builds in terms of the existing coal fleet? So in order to, to answer your question is that Began the process used in the coal miners in Brazil is mainly for uh, they 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 burn it in order to create energy for more for thermoelectrics. That's that's the technology. And regarding the trends of growth, I mean since since we are not well developed well positioned regarding coal production, there is now recent initiatives in order to expand uh, the the uh, the production and the exploration of reserves. So uh, to answer your question specifically in that regard, I would say that the trend. It's positive. It's a positive trend. So we would be able to, I mean, to, to increase our amount of production regarding coal because this is, uh, as you mean, we have great amount of reserves as you can see on the slides over there. We're just not well exploring together. But, but uh, uh, there is even um, uh, a congressman that represents the the Rio Grande do Sul state where is located the main reserves and the main production that he's he's working. Uh, with the, uh, the the government, with ministers, in order to initiate and increase the amount of coal for the next years. Thank you. Other questions here? Um, I don't think it's uh, controversial for me to say that efforts to scale up pyrolysis and gasification and those kinds of sources of fuel are suppressed politically and economically by the big industries, the coal industry and the oil industry. Is there any analog like that, uh, for instance, the ethanol industry in Brazil, that they try to hold back innovations in this area? So regarding suppress, I would say that there's, uh, you know, from, from our knowledge, there's no um, conflict in that regard, because it is an interest from Brazil to develop uh, the energy grid. Because this, as, as I mentioned, you are very critical uh, regarding uh, regarding this uh, this aspect of the energy sources. But uh, regarding pyrolysis and gasification, what what you need to keep in mind is that, um, for example, what 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 is the issue that they have not yet installed is because companies who they think technology they try to just simply export it to Brazil, right? 
And of course, plants of this type, they're quite expensive. And, and if you're just uh, uh, import, uh, exporting to Brazil, you will receive also a high importation taxes. So what is the best model in order to be able to be successful to implement those? And that's the reason why we still have not yet technology like those in Brazil. It's to work in a model of transfer of technology, either via licensing or joint venture. So this way you would be able to address the 65% of minimum quantity in Brazil and have access to credit line that would make your business feasible in Brazil. Thank you. Yeah. Um, another question here? So ad addressing a few of the, the remarks you made about mastering the technology, do you find more logistical hurdles in the collection and uh, advising the people that you're going to be getting all of your, your inputs from or the technology, like you said, and managing that so it can be effective? There's, of course, a market for that. I see that. But um, which do you find to be more of a, a hurdle for yourselves? So just to make sure if I uh, understood well, when you say hurdle, you mean challenge. Yeah. Okay. Um, regarding the hurdle, I, I would say that uh, the challenges, of course, you would have in the, you have two opportunities, such as in the collection and as well on the technology to be used. Uh, we need improvements in Brazil regarding uh, the collection. Of course, we have, um, uh, uh, I would say, um, uh, pretty, in some regions, especially in the south, a good collection. As I mentioned, in 2005, there was a great amount of investments that was, was made in order to improve the collection. But I would say that the, the, the challenge here is to, to have the technology in order to find a long-term solutions for the waste. Right now, what they're trying to do is to find a, like band-aid solutions in technology. For example, they're trying to put biodigesters. Biodigesters, is, first of all, is very expensive. And secondly, it doesn't, it doesn't, find, it, 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 it doesn't solve your problem. Your problem is still there. So I mean, the, the challenge here is to find a, a qualified partner that has the technology in order to, 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 to come to Brazil and explore this greenfield market because nobody in Brazil at this point has a technology such as a gasification, a national technology such as a gasification or a plasmification or pyrolysis. And MRG Solutions is very much I mean, working. I mean, we have the complete market already set up over there in the, in order to start. And the only, the only missing part that we're looking now is to find a highly qualified partner in order to to partner with us and explore this market. Thank you. Uh, another question here? Any online, Robert? OK. Kim? Another question regarding the grid. Um, so you know, what you outlined here was that certainly the prediction that you're going to need some more sources. So the question is, uh, what, what's the condition? So typically, you, there's two ways to improve delivery. One is through increasing source. Uh, another one is through uh, T&D, transmission and distribution. So the question is, um, do you have a feel for what's the current condition of uh, transmission, and di the dis transmission and distribution system in Brazil? And how much of that is an issue? as compared to, you know, adding some additional sources. Thank you very much, Brian. That's a very good question. Um, regarding the distribution, because of course you have many sources of, um, of energy that you can, can uh, put in the grid and start distributing. And, uh, and right now, I mean, this is a, a, a challenge as well, because when you talk about grids, you need to think about also about smart grids. Correct, because uh, to, in order to produce energy, you need to be sure also to 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 transmit it also on the power lines correctly in order to avoid any uh, issues we got. Because the the amount of energy they produce, the frequency is different, so you need to be able to to adapt it accordingly in order to be able to distribute effectively the energy. And right now, for example, in the state of Paraná. Uh, uh, regarding smart grids, there's a lot of investments going on in that world. For example, at, uh, in, in Curitiba, uh, there's this uh, uh, energy company uh, that is investing about 55 million of reais, that's about 30 billion, uh, 30 million of dollars, in order for smart grid projects. What are the best? What other? What other uh, sources that we we can uh, work together? I mean, in order to 
to put it in line effectively. Uh, that would be smart grid technology. So this is an opportunity also uh, that uh, Brazil is looking for uh, solutions in that regard. In, for example, how to, to, to uh, distribute energy generated from biomass or how to distribute appropriately energy generated from uh, windmills. So this is um, uh, an opportunity also that has, uh, that are plenty of uh, investments and institutes in order to, to develop that area. Are there any other uh, questions here? Otherwise, I'd like to uh, then thank Stefan for his uh, enlightening presentation uh, this afternoon. And I'm sure he'll be around here if the others have questions they'd like to ask now. So thank you very much, and thank you to our uh, viewers online.